I'm assuming that nobody watching this video has been living under a rock, but just in case you have been, the markets have been getting off to a pretty terrible start this year. The Nasdaq just wrapped up its worst month in nearly 14 years, having declined more than 14% in the month of April, and it's currently down over 22% for the year so far. The S&P 500 also declined more than 9% last month, and so far it's down over 13% for the year. Not to mention, people keep bringing up the topic of a recession and whether or not we're going to experience one soon. So all in all, the markets have been pretty volatile and things at this point seem a little uneasy. But we as dividend and income investors know that when the markets as a whole go down, it means that there can be a lot of great opportunities out there for those of us looking to buy a good dividend or income stock. It's even better if you happen to have a good sum of money on the sidelines that you can use to invest so you can purchase more shares of your favorite dividend stocks and thus receive a higher distribution amount. So while growth investors may be having a pretty horrific 2022 so far, we as dividend and income investors have been doing what we've always been doing, which is sitting back, relaxing, and still collecting our dividend distributions as scheduled. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one company in particular that's continued to perform exceptionally well, all the while offering a dividend yield of over 11% according to Yahoo Finance. Not only that, but the company has also been able to keep growing their annual dividend distribution amounts every year for more than 15 years and counting, even during both COVID and the financial crisis, which is pretty unusual. When compared to other high-yielding dividend stocks, there really aren't too many that I've come across that have been able to deliver such superior returns to shareholders. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The company we're going to be taking a look at today is Hercules Capital, ticker symbol HTGC. Hercules Capital is a business development company that provides venture debt, senior secured loans, and growth capital to priority-held venture capital-backed companies at all stages of development. The firm generally seeks to invest in companies that have been operating between 6 to 12 months prior to the date of their investment, and they like to target the technology, sustainable energy, and life science sectors. Hercules Capital likes to make investments between $10 million and $25 million into each company they provide financing to. They're also an older business development company, having been founded back in 2003. Currently offering a dividend yield of almost 11.5%, Hercules Capital currently trades for $16.80 per share. You can see the company's been able to grow their dividend distributions every year since at least 2006 when you take into consideration both their base dividends and their special dividends. That's pretty impressive since back in 2008 during the financial crisis, most business development companies were forced to cut their dividends. More recently, the company has been providing shareholders with a pretty sizable amount of special distributions, but you can see every year the amount they've paid in their base dividends has also continued since 2006. Over the span of this company's existence, their share price has grown by over 31%, which given for a BDC is actually pretty decent. In just the last 5 days, the share price of HTGC has dropped by almost 8%, so if it wasn't for this recent volatility in the markets, it would be quite a bit higher. I'm not concerned at all about this company though, since it's been through much worse situations without having to cut their dividend distributions. The stock price is currently up over 27% over the last 5 years, and again, that's pretty impressive for a BDC since most of these companies tend to see a pretty stagnant share price while offering 7-8% dividend yields. When we break down their investment portfolio, we can see that 94% of their investments are in floating rate loans. Floating rate loans are a type of debt where the interest rate changes over time. So basically what this means is that as interest rates rise, Hercules Capital will be able to generate more revenue from their debt investments. But at the same time, rising interest rates can also be like a two-edged sword, because while rising interest rates means more revenue, it can also mean that more borrowers potentially default on their loans and thus unable to pay back Hercules Capital. So there can definitely be good and bad things that come with rising interest rates. As I mentioned earlier, Hercules Capital primarily invests in the technology and life science sectors. 39.7% of their debt is in drug discovery and development companies. They're also invested in a lot of other companies like 23andMe, which is a really popular genealogy company that I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with. You basically provide your saliva and mail it to them, and they're supposed to tell you where your ancestors came from. Some other companies they're invested in particular from their technology side would include several popular side gig companies like Lyft, Postmates, and DoorDash. In total, their loan portfolio consists of 97 companies with a market capitalization of $2.06 billion. With a debt investment portfolio of over $2.22 billion, this makes Hercules one of the largest BDCs in the industry and places them ahead of some other BDCs we've looked at before on this channel, such as Bearings BDC and SLR Investment Corporation. One of their primary strategies is to invest in companies that are experiencing a lot of expansion during their venture growth stage. Going through their financials, there's always a couple things I like to focus in on whenever I'm looking at a BDC. The NAV, or the net asset value, is a super important metric for BDCs. NAV is the company's total assets minus its total liabilities, or for a BDC, it's basically the measure of the total amount of debt in their portfolio. 
You definitely don't want to see a steady decline in a BDC's NAV because it means their investment portfolio is shrinking. It always points to sooner or later the company needing to cut their dividend because they're bringing in less interest from their debt. Good thing for Hercules Capital though is that their NAV has slowly been trending upward, which has always helped accommodate for the rising dividends over the years. These results seem to go with what they tout in their investor presentation. They claim that their stock has outperformed a peer group of other BDCs when looking at the last 1, 3, 5, and 7 years when dividends were reinvested. I'm not sure why they chose these specific BDCs for this peer group, maybe it has something to do with the size of them, but I think that these peer companies like Oxford Square Capital and BlackRock Capital Investment Corporation are pretty terrible choices to make up in this peer group. If you remove these two companies alone, it'd probably result in a much smaller spread. But still, there's no denying that Hercules Capital has been a really consistent performer, not just as a BDC, but as a dividend stock. A lot of you are probably aware that my favorite BDC of all time is Ares Capital, ticker symbol ARCC. They have an incredible management team behind them who have been able to provide some pretty exceptional returns to shareholders. I think they have one of the best investment portfolios in the industry and they've been more recently providing more growth in their dividend distributions. So with that being said, I figured it'd be a good idea to compare these two companies and find out how well Hercules stands up against Ares, the god of courage versus the god of strength. If we compare both companies' performance starting on June 9th, 2005, which was when Hercules Capital's IPO took place, we can see that Ares just barely beat out Hercules. With an average annual return of 12.21%, Ares narrowly wins over Hercules' 11.86%. At the end of the day, there's only about a $3,600 difference in ending balance had you invested $10,000 and chose to reinvest all of your dividends. If you weren't reinvesting your dividends, you can see on the bottom graph the ending result would have been even closer. So all in all, these results are pretty encouraging. Investing in both companies would be a good strategy if you want a diverse, high-yielding BDC portion of your investment portfolio. In fact, Hercules Capital actually performed a lot better over the same period than a lot of the other most popular dividend growth stocks out there. Check out these results when compared to Procter & Gamble. Hercules absolutely smashes PG stock by an additional $20,000. That's a huge difference. Imagine if you invested a ton of Hercules, like let's say $100,000 back in June of 2005, when compared to Procter & Gamble, you would have made an extra $200,000 more during that same period. Let's compare it with another really popular dividend growth company, 3M. To be fair, their stock has been getting destroyed over the last year, but if you look below, even if you didn't reinvest all of your dividends and instead took the money and ran, you would have made even more with Hercules Capital. Don't get me wrong, I know investing outside of a retirement account will mean higher taxes, but this is one reason why I love higher yielding dividend stocks. Putting money into these kind of holdings sometimes bring much higher returns than many of the popular dividend growth companies people like to talk about, like Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, and McDonald's. Regardless, if you do primarily invest for income, you should always have some of your portfolio dedicated to growth holdings, especially if you're much younger. My favorite way of making sure there's growth in an income portfolio would be to add SCHD, which is a really good dividend growth ETF that's well diversified and carries a low expense ratio. So to summarize everything we've looked at, Hercules Capital is one of the best performing business development companies in the industry, and I personally think it's a pick worth considering for a high yield dividend portfolio. We've already seen it has an amazing track record of continuous dividend increases every single year for more than 15 years and counting. Even Ares Capital didn't make it through the 2008 financial crisis without having to reduce their dividend amount. That's an achievement that only Hercules and a few other BDCs can tout. As we just saw, despite being a big yielding stock, HTGC has been able to outperform a lot of the really popular dividend growth stocks when you reinvest dividends. So in the end, I think Hercules Capital is a pretty solid pick for a higher yielding portfolio. But as I always like to say, be sure to perform your own due diligence and research before investing in any stock or ETF, and be sure to diversify your portfolio across different holdings in different sectors in order to reduce the amount of risk you're exposed to. Alright everyone, that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If this video benefited you in any sort of way, please click the like button below and click subscribe if you want to see more dividend investing strategy videos. It would just let me know that there's a sizable enough audience out there who wants this kind of content and I'll continue to provide you all with that content. Alright everyone, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next time. Take care.